my review of the Nikon D750. I've got three parts to this review. First, I want to talk a little bit about where this camera falls in the current lineup of Nikon full-frame cameras. I want to share some comparisons and thoughts versus the 5D Mark III. And I'll just share some sample images and videos that I've been shooting with both cameras, but especially the Nikon over the last couple of weeks professionally and just for fun. Let's start by talking about where this camera fits in the lineup. And we're just going to hit on a couple of bullet points and talk about similarities and differences between the three, the 610, the 750, and the 8. 10. Now we're going to start with construction. The 610 and the 750 have the same basic internal construction with this partial magnesium alloy skeleton, top and rear is covered, and then there's some differences. The 750's got carbon fiber, should be tougher, and it does make it weigh a little bit less. The 610's got polycarbonate, that's the same type of material you see in your kind of entry level DSLRs as well. The 810 built like a tank with a complete magnesium alloy body, very beefy, very heavy. Talk a little bit about the build of these and the functions and form as well. Talking on the back, the first thing you notice, D750's got a tilty flippy screen. It is something that I really appreciate. Now there is some concern because Nikon has already come out and said, please don't mess with the little ribbon back here. Uh, but you know what, I think it's going to be fine. Just be safe, be careful, and I'm not going to use it all of the time, but it is really nice and gives you easy access to kind of perspectives and angles that you wouldn't be able to otherwise easily get. It is not touch sensitive, however. I hope that is coming. You may have different opinions about touch screens in your cameras, but I like them. Now, when we look at the buttons on the back of the 610 and the 750, they have many buttons that share dual purposes depending on what mode you're in. And I found myself on occasion with the 750 trying to change my ISO and accidentally magnifying the images said because I hadn't waited for the image review to leave yet. I think that's something I would get used to, uh, but it's, it's a little bit annoying. And when you look at something like the 810, which has a physical button for every setting, notice there are no dual purposes back there on that right hand side of the camera uh, because they're up on the top as well. So it does give you a little bit more uh, it does give you more buttons. One other thing that I want to make mention of is the grip on the 750. I'll come back and talk about this in a little more detail. I don't love it. It is narrow uh, and kind of on the smallish side for me. After carrying this camera around for an event uh, for the evening, my hand was achy. So we'll come back and talk about that. But a benefit of the 750 over both the other cameras is weight. Comes in at 1.65 pounds, whereas the D610, which isn't quite as capable of a camera, actually weighs a little bit more at 1.87, or let's round up to 1.9. The 810, that's a heavy beast, over two pounds. And that is without lenses. I'm showing you pictures with lenses, but that's without lenses. And so once you put lenses on these cameras, you're talking about carrying a lot of weight. And the savings, the weight savings in the D750 is appreciated and it certainly feels lighter in the hand and we haven't mentioned size so much but it is a smaller camera than the other two as well not by a huge margin but by somewhat let's talk a little bit about internals and the resolution so the d610 and the d750 both share 24 megapixels but it is a new sensor that's why i got the word newer there and there is improvements. We're seeing better low light image quality, uh, higher ISO, cleaner I higher ISOs, especially in the shadows. And this is something we've been starting to talk about more recently, uh, the amount of noise in the shadows and banding or lack thereof. The 750 files are quite clean. Now, when I'm shooting with the 5D Mark III, I start to get nervous up around 5,600. I know there'll be some noise. In many cases, it's still an acceptable amount. And as I go above that, I really don't like delivering files to clients that have you know, that much. Shooting easily up to 8,000, 10,000, and felt like these are files that were really quite clean, especially after doing a little bit of post-processing in Lightroom. Now the D810 though stands alone with that 36 megapixel resolution sensor. It's just absolutely gorgeous, an amazing amount of detail because it also does not have the optical low pass filter. So that really sets it apart from these two cameras, but the D750 still does very nice and in low light straight out of the camera, 
does a little bit better. It just doesn't have quite as many pixels. You take those D810 files and downsize them though, uh, 224 megapixels, and they're gonna look almost the same. ISO I touched on a little bit. Again, D750 matches the 810, if not beats it straight out of the camera and does a little bit better than the 610 straight out of the camera. It's certainly better, it's noticeable, but it's not anything to get excited about. It would not be the one reason I would upgrade from a 610 to 750. There are other reasons though. Talk about autofocus, and you know, I always hesitate to throw up just the numbers, so obviously I'm gonna be talking you through this because they do not tell the whole story. The D610, 39 autofocus points, just nine of those are cross-type. It's not an amazing spread, uh, and it also does not do superb in low light. It does fine, but it's not something that I would feel comfortable taking into a low light environment where I was getting paid to shoot uh, repeatedly uh, because it's just a little bit slower. 750, really quite amazing. So fast, even in very low light. It has the newest focusing brains of all three cameras and it does a fantastic job. You got a good spread, 51 points, uh, 15 of those are cross type, same as on the 8D, 810, but coming back to the 750, again, it is the newest brains of all of them and in low light, I found it to be exceptionally fast, better than the 5D Mark III. I'll talk about one hesitation in a minute as well. So let's wrap that segment up and talk about these three cameras and what they offer. The value is clear with the 610. That is a spectacularly nice sensor in there. Uh, in some measurements, still better than the D750. On the whole, though, the D750 is better uh, sensor-wise. But for $1,500, you're getting a nice camera. You got to carry around a little bit more weight. Not quite as good as focusing in low light. Uh, but if you just want to get into full frame on the Nikon side, that offers a really nice savings and a nice way to do that. On the other end of the spectrum is the D810. You're paying a lot of money. You're gonna be carrying around a very heavy camera, but I know medium format photographers, more than one, that have sold their medium format gear and are quite happily walking around with the D810, which is a much lighter body to them, much more portable, uh, and getting the files that they want. Uh, studio work, architect, landscape, it's just a lovely, lovely sensor in there. Uh, I gushed about, well, we'll talk more about dynamic range in a second as well, but I gushed about that with the Sony a7R and we're using a very similar sensor here in the D810. That leaves the D750, which fits in the middle of value and versatility for me. It may not give you the jaw-dropping performance of the resolution of the D810. It might not give you the savings of the 610, but it is a camera that if I'm being paid to shoot an event, um, or I just want a camera that is going to be able to do just about all types of photography that I need it to, the D750 really hits that spot. The autofocus performance I found to be very, very good, even in low light. That high ISO I mentioned and the lack of noise in the shadows gives me really clean files up to 12,800. I should say re not really clean up at 12,800, but workable. I haven't mentioned video performance up until now. I think the 750 is again, one of the best Nikon cameras to date for video performance. Uh, really, I love the image quality coming out of it. Uh, not perfect again, and the 5D Mark III holds up very well, if not beats it at some of the higher ISOs with video, but you do have that full 1080p at 60, 60p at 1080 uh, frames, and um, they look good, looks very good. Size and weight, you know, it's lighter than the 610. It's a little bit smaller. And then although I don't love the grip, uh, overall the body and form of functions of the camera are quite nice. Articulating screen is great. And I'm gonna throw Wi-Fi on this list as well. It's one of the first professional level full frame DSLRs to include Wi-Fi. And that's one of those other things where professionally I'm not gonna use this all of the time, but it certainly is really nice when I want to, it's there. Now I said, it's not perfect camera. I've got a couple of items on this list. First thing I wanna make sure is none of these are deal breakers. Uh, these are just little wiggly things that you know bother me here and there. The grip I mentioned, it's a little sharpish, uh, a little narrow. The 610 even has a more rounded grip and it's nothing nearly as comfortable as the 5D Mark III. I think I would just get used to it after a while, but when I'm going back and forth between these two cameras, I have a strong preference for the 5D Mark III here. You know, a little annoyed by the two-handed control. ISO is over here, and that's where I'm mostly going, and white balance as well. 
I really like on the 5D Mark III and the 810, you've got dedicated buttons for those. And the fact that in the case of the 5D Mark III, they're all right here. I don't have to move another hand over here. I can keep this hand out on the lens or I can even uh, do my changes with one hand. And it takes two hands here with the 750. We're making some sacrifices for this kind of smaller body size. The buffer isn't the best. Uh, it's, you know, it's a little bit on the smaller side. It's got the fastest frames per second of all three cameras, but it's not going to sustain that as long as the 810 can sustain that. Even with those giant file sizes that the 810 is producing. Again, not a deal breaker. Uh, and video limits in some forms and quality bit rates is limited to just 20 minutes and the other ones it's limited to 30 minutes. Again, most of the time when you're out there making videos, uh, you're doing short five, 10, 15 minute long segments. Uh, and it's pretty rare that you wanna go that high, but you should know that there is that limit if you want to. One little quirk, I've, you know, I've called this camera quirky a couple of times. Uh, the, the biggest and most annoying quirk to me is that there are separate live view settings from the viewfinder settings. So let's say I'm about to record a video and I walk up to a scene and I wanna get my settings correct. So I dial it in and then I turn live view on and the settings switch my aperture, my ISO and my shutter speed. Maybe just a few of them, maybe all of them. That's because when you switch into live view, it goes back to settings that you're using previously in live view. And when you switch out of it, it goes back to settings you were using in the viewfinder or op optically. When you know that it's not a big deal you can actually even start to use it to your benefit to some degree. But I really like the fact that if I set something a certain way, it's gonna stay that way until I make changes to it. Doesn't, should not matter in my opinion, if I'm moving in and out of live view. So, and then auto white balance, I have found a little bit uh, greater inconsistency in consecutive shots with auto white balance on in this camera versus some of the other ones I've shot with, again, pretty minor, you're shooting in raw, you're gonna be able to easily correct that, but it's a little annoying when the variance is enough that you have to make individual corrections on a series of files. Let's talk about how this camera compares to the 5D Mark III, which I'll tell you, you know, there are certainly now much better cameras out there in various categories than the 5D Mark III. You wanna shoot low light video, the A7S. You wanna shoot 4K for cheap, the Panasonic GH4. You wanna do good stills photography. There are a lot of choices out there that are now better than the 5D Mark III. But the 5D Mark III really still is a well-selling camera because it is so versatile and maybe it's not the best in any one category or any category really anymore. But it because it is versatile and it does a good enough job across the board it really is a nice camera and continues to sell very well. However, I feel like Nikon has now come along with a camera that not only is cheaper, but matches or exceeds in some ways the 5D Mark III. And as I said, cheaper, that's pretty big. And it's smaller and it's lighter with some sacrifices. So first thing I wanna mention is that 5D Mark III to me, and again, I'm more comfortable with this camera. This is the camera I shoot professionally with for 95% of what I'm doing. Uh, it's got less quirks. When you set a certain way, it's gonna stay that way. No live view changes, uh, you know, exposure preview is on by default. Although I should say that all of that is now in the Nikon. You just have to make sure you turn it on. The auto white balance, as I said, is a little more consistent in the 5D Mark III. The ergonomics of this camera, I think, are near perfect. Certainly not very light and it's bulky, but it feels really nice in the hand. And focusing. Now, if you look over on the other side of the, on the list, focusing is also over there on the 750. I have found in low light the 750 to be very fast, faster than the 5D Mark III. In good light, they're about the same. But there have been a couple of times where the 750, it seems a little more sure of itself than maybe it should be. There are a couple of times where it thought it had focus or reported that it had focus. And in fact, it did not. Whereas the 5D Mark III, I feel like is slower, but much more consistent. Or I shouldn't say much more because it really has only been one or two times where I've seen this. It's not enough to make me worried about this camera, but I certainly, um, well, it's paused for consideration and I've put it on the list. 
Didn't really mention this up until now, but the dynamic range. These Nikon cameras using the Sony sensors, again, talked about this in the A7R, just fantastic dynamic range. You can pull out so much detail from the shadows without getting noisy. You can pull down the highlights, uh, saving so much information, or there is so much information already saved in the file that you can pull down the highlights. And when you put these two cameras side by side, or the file side by side, I get a little sad. Uh, megapixel wise, resolution, detail, there aren't huge differences. There's certainly differences at the higher ISOs, but you know, for the most part, it's fine. But when you start manipulating the files, these, the, the range um, in the Nikon files is just lovely. It's really nice. Uh, and I want Canon to update their sensors to give us more dynamic range. That's what I want more than any megapixels right now or resolution. Uh, and then I mentioned the higher ISOs, the Sony, or sorry, the Sony, the Sony sensor in the Nikon D750 does a nice job at those higher ISOs and they are cleaner, except on the video side. Uh, on the video side, I feel like the 5D Mark III does pull ahead and we're going to look at samples here in just a second. And again, focus I put down there as well. Let's take a moment and look at a few samples now. That's my review of the Nikon D750. Now, if you've watched this much, take a moment and hit that thumbs up button. That's an easy way to thank me for my time. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. I've got lots more great content coming in the new year. Gear reviews, how to's, Lightroom tutorials. I don't want you to miss any of it. And if you're buying, think about using my links right down below this video. I suggest B and H, they are fantastic photo and camera store, and they help me and make many of my reviews possible. So please use those links. If you've got any questions, leave them down below. If you're dying to get a question answered, the best place where I can just about guarantee all questions answered is over on my Facebook page. So take a moment, hop over there and leave a question and somebody will get you an answer. Thanks so much for watching.